So your fuel gauge is not correctly reading on your car. One of the most frustrating things I've had to deal with, it leaves a lot of guesswork involved in determining how much fuel you've actually got left in your tank. So we're gonna look at the components that are involved in telling you how much fuel you've got in your tank. And that can help you to diagnose the problem. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to cope with the fact that you don't know how much fuel you've got in your car. There's a little golden tip that I was given when this happened to me that just stopped me from running out of fuel. So three components are involved in the fuel gauge. You've obviously got the gauge on the dashboard that physically tells you how much fuel there is in the tank. There's a little scope for this gauge to be malfunctioning or sticking, but that's generally not the problem. They're very simple in their operation and it's very unlikely that the gauge on your instrument cluster is to blame. You've then got a circuit that takes a signal from the sender in the fuel tank. So this circuit can sometimes play up. So if your fuel gauge is just not reading at all, it could well be an issue with the circuit, a bad earth, a bad connection somewhere, or some other problem where the signal is just not getting from the sender in the fuel tank to the dashboard display. Then you've got the actual sender in the fuel tank. Now this is the most common cause of fuel gauge inaccuracies and it can sometimes stick fully on, fully off, or just not read properly. So it will register as half a tank when you've actually got a full tank and it might stick on quarter of a tank as the tank is starting to empty completely of fuel. So not the most helpful situation to be in if this sender is starting to play up. So it consists of a little float and a little resistor. And judging by how much fuel is in the tank itself, it will affect the float and the electrical signal that comes from the fuel tank will be interpreted by the instrument cluster at the front to tell you how much fuel there is. So when your fuel tank is full, this float is at the top position. So depending on how full or empty the tank is, the float's position and the resistance in the electrical circuit or the amount of voltage read by the gauge at the front of the car is affected directly by those fuel levels. So it's a fairly simple thing in operation, but sometimes people only ever use a quarter of a tank and just filling it up to the maximum. There's an amount of dirt and debris that has built up within the tank. And sometimes this float can actually start to stick. So sometimes it does free up over time, but in most cases you need to replace the entire sender unit. It's generally fairly easy to do. You can access it from outside. So you haven't got to take the car apart in most cases to get to this sender unit. And it's a relatively cheap part to fix. So what can you do if you're in a car and you've got no way of knowing how much fuel there is in there? Well, the tip that I was given that really got me out of a problem situation, I had no funds at the time, couldn't fix it, didn't have the time or the money to fix it, and I just had to live with it for a few months. So what I was told to do was just fill the tank up completely but reset the trip computer. So I then knew that I could get between 300 and 500 miles out of a tank at the time. So just by monitoring the amount of miles I had done, I had a good indicator of how many miles I had left. And I actually set the conservative level of 300 miles. So every time it was approaching the 300 miles, I would fill the tank up again completely. So that way I knew I always had enough fuel in the tank, even though that fuel gauge itself was playing up and was just downright lying to me. So I hope that tip's been useful to you. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you if you're interested in cars and want to learn more about them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.